Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the best settings for the Tascam DR10L Pro audio recorder to record high quality audio of people speaking. To save you time, I've also created a PDF cheat sheet that is going to list all of the settings as well as what they do for you to reference. So if you want to save some time, I would highly recommend downloading this cheat sheet. It is linked down in the video description completely for free. Also linked down in the description, you'll find a link to this video's sponsor, Motion VFX. If you've been looking for plugins for Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro, Motion VFX has everything you need to take your videos to the next level. For the holidays, Motion VFX is having a sale called Black Weeks, where you can get 30% off any of their products with the coupon code 30black, and each week of the sale, they will choose four select plugins that you can get for 50% off. Plus, if you spend at least $100, you get their M Routine plugin for free. Personally, I'm a big fan of their M Reels and M Wedding presets. You can check out those as well as everything that Motion VFX has on sale at the link in the video description. With that, turn on your recorder, hit the menu button, and up first we have the recording level. This is where you will set your gain for how loudly the recorder will be recording. In the past, with the original dr this setting was very important because you do not want your audio recorder to peak because it was essentially impossible to recover peaked audio and you could potentially end up with ruined audio if someone began speaking very loudly into the microphone. Thankfully, because the dr Pro can record 32-bit float audio, this is far less of an issue because even if the audio is very loud, you can bring the levels down without them peaking in your editing software. Because of this, I recommend setting your recording level to high-mid, which is almost the loudest recording setting that the recorder can record, but not quite. And this should give you audio that sounds great while also being able to easily tweak it if the person wearing this recorder is a bit too loud or a bit too quiet. Menu two now, we have the low cut setting. And this gives you options like 40 hertz, 80 hertz, 120 hertz, and 220 hertz. And if you enable this, it is essentially going to cause the recorder to not record certain deeper pitched audio frequencies. If you have a deeper voice, you may be like, oh no, it's gonna cut out some of my audio. No, it's not like that. This low cut setting is useful if you're recording on a very windy day and you want to have the recorder remove some of that super low deep wind noise, that rumble that you get. Personally though, I find that you can achieve the same effect with tools in your editing software, and I have videos about how to make your audio sound great using your editing software on my YouTube channel. Please check them out. So I do not actually recommend having low cut enabled, and I would keep it turned off. Next, menu three, you have the limiter, and this is a setting that used to be more useful before the advent of 32-bit float recording because the limiter can help prevent your audio from peaking but because the DR10L Pro can record 32-bit float audio, even if your audio does peak, you can lower the gain in your editing software and recover the audio that has clipped. So my recommendation to you is to keep this setting turned off. Moving on, menu four, you have auto level. And in the past with the previous DR10L, I recommended having the auto level enabled, which would help keep your audio pushing toward around negative three decibels all the time, which made sure that things were loud enough. That said, because you're recording 32-bit float audio and you can lower it if it's too loud or bring it up if it's too quiet without affecting the audio quality, I would recommend keeping auto level disabled. Next, you have phase. And this is a new setting for the DR10L Pro and it is gonna be very useful if you are using a microphone other than the stock lav mic that comes with the recorder. Certain microphones and cables can sound better if they are inverted, but that's gonna depend completely on the microphone that you're using. So if you are just using the default stock mic that comes with the Tascam DR10L Pro, leave this setting set to default. Next, we have file format, and the DR10L Pro gives you a few options, including WAV, MP3H, and MP3L. MP3H stands for MP3 high bit rate, 192 kilobits per second, while MP3L stands for low bit rate, which records at 128 kilobits per second, and WAVE stands for the highest quality audio you can record. So every time that you're recording, I would always recommend leaving this file format set to WAVE. Next, for file type, you have the option of either mono or poly, with mono being a mono recording and poly being a stereo format. But what's important to remember is that even setting this recorder to the poly, which is stereo setting, the same data is gonna still be recorded to both the right and left channels, so 
it's not going to be true stereo as you may think of it with other recorders. This is really only gonna make a difference in your video editing software and how it handles the audio files, but personally, I've always left mine set to mono and it works great. Next, for recording format, you have the option of either 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. I recommend leaving this set to 48 kilohertz because this should match up better with most cameras scratch audio and help prevent audio drift whenever you sync up the audio from your DR10L Pro recorder and your camera. Next, we have bit depth, and this is incredibly important. You're going to want to always have this set to 32-bit float, even though this recorder does give you the option of 16 or 24. By you selecting 32-bit float, this is gonna give you dramatically more flexibility in post when you're editing, which we've already talked about. Completely worth having this enabled. Menu 10, you have time mark, and this is a setting that will enable little markers in your audio editing software at set times. You can set these markers to appear every five, 10, 15, 30, or 60 minutes. Likewise, with menu 11, you have peak mark, which is going to add markers to your audio editing software when the audio peaks. Now, to be clear, with both of these marker settings, these are not audible markers. This is not going to affect the audio in your video in any way. It is only going to make these markers appear in your audio editing software. And I want you to know that I'm saying audio editing software because in my testing, I could only make these markers appear in Adobe Audition. I could not get them to show up in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, but that may be because I need to change a setting somewhere. I'm not sure. Just know at the very least, if you are someone that edits your audio in Adobe Audition, these can be nice features to turn on. Menu 12, you have file name, and this is very useful because you can select either have the file name be text, date, or the unit name of the recorder. And then if you go down to menus 13 and 14, these are going to give you control over the text or the unit name. So for example, if you have a recorder that you always put on the groom at a wedding, you could name this recorder groom under name, and this way whenever it comes time for you to copy your files, they will always have the word groom on them, which can make it very easy for you to edit and sync up your audio. Likewise, you could also go to menu 13 and select text and call this whatever you want, and then that will appear in your file name as as well. So if you wanted to get very specific and put a person's name, you could do that. And then the person's name would show up in the file name too, which is very useful. If you do not want to customize this in menu 12, I would just leave this set to date, which as the name implies, will title the name of the file as the date that it was recorded, which can be very useful because as long as you know the date that you film something, you should be able to find this file. Here's a power user tip for you now, by the way. If you want to name your files faster, you can use the DR10L Pro Bluetooth app, as long as you have the Bluetooth adapter connected into your recorder here at the top. And instead of needing to use this tiny little screen to select letters, you can type them very quickly using your phone. Menu 15 now is power save. And by turning this on, it will set the DR10L Pro recorder to turn off after approximately 10 minutes if it's not recording to save battery. I personally leave this off because anytime that I have the recorder turned on, it's usually because I'm gonna be recording. So I usually only turn the recorder on whenever I'm recording. But if you were someone that turns your recorder off and on and you oftentimes forget to turn it off and you're not always recording, feel free to enable power save. Also, here's another little power user tip for you with this recorder. If you want to save time and start an audio recording very quickly, you do not actually need to hold down the power button to turn it on and then hold up on the power button to start the recording. You can just hold the power button up towards record and the recorder will automatically turn on and begin recording immediately, which can save you a few precious seconds. Menu 16 now is file number, and here you can append a number to the beginning of your file. I usually don't mess with this, but this is an option if you want to adjust those numbers. Menu 17 now is backlight, and this is where you can set how long you want the screen to be lit up after you press a button on the recorder. You have the option of either five seconds, 30 seconds, or always. I recommend setting it to five seconds because then the screen will dim faster, and this can help save you just a little bit more battery life. Menu 18, format SD is very important because this is how you format your memory card in the recorder. I always recommend formatting your memory card in the recorder because this can help guarantee that the file structure is set up properly. Of course, make sure that you've copied all your files off your memory card before formatting because formatting will permanently delete all of them. With the DR10L Pro, Tascam actually gives you two options for how you can format your memory card, either a quick option or an erase option. 99% of the time, you're gonna be fine selecting quick format, which will be much 
quicker, as the name implies. I would only select erase if you had very sensitive audio files that you'd recorded and you want to take some extra steps to help guarantee that they will not be recoverable afterwards. In my experience, you can sometimes recover audio files that have been formatted if you quick format, but by choosing erase format, this is gonna take longer and help guarantee that the files are truly deleted. Menu 19 now is where you can set what type of battery your recorder is using. Here you have the option of alkaline, NIMH, or lithium. I always recommend using lithium batteries with the DR10L Pro because they will offer you dramatically longer battery life, up to double the battery life of rechargeable batteries. So if you want your recordings to last for even the longest wedding day, use those lithium batteries. Menu 20 is where you can set the date and time of your recorder. You should have already set this whenever you first turn the recorder on, but if you did not, or if your settings get changed, or it's daylight savings time, etc., this menu is where you can set the date and time. Menu 21 is called System Init, which stands for System Initialize, which is another way of saying completely reset this recorder all the way back to its default settings. So if your recorder ever starts acting squirrely, or you change one of your settings, you don't know how to change it back and things acting weird, just go in here to Menu 21, choose System Initialize, and that's gonna reset it back to the beginning, and then you can go follow this video and get all the settings correct again. Next, menu 22 says version info, and this is gonna tell you which firmware version your recorder has. Tascam does not super oftentimes release updates for their audio recorders, but if they ever do, I will probably make a video about it, and you can then check which firmware you have by going to menu 22. Menu 23 is where you check the firmware version of your Bluetooth adapter that you've connected to your DR10L Pro. If you do not have a Bluetooth adapter connected, you can insert one here into the port at the top, like I said earlier. FYI though, even if you have a Bluetooth adapter inserted into your DR10L Pro, whenever you go to menu 23 to check the Bluetooth version of your adapter, it may tell you that there's not one connected or it's not available or something like that. If this happens, it's because you need to first enable your Bluetooth adapter in the recorder. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. For now though, we need to go on to menu 24, which is titled Card Reader. As the name implies, if you want to use your DR10L Pro as a memory card reader that you can plug into your computer, then select Card Reader, and that will enable you to copy your audio files from your memory card without needing to remove the memory card from the recorder. I would keep in mind though, that even though this recorder's connection is USB-C, it is only USB 2.0 speed. So this may not be as fast as you taking your memory card out and putting it into a card reader. I would bet money on that actually. So I would really only use your DR10L Pro as a card reader if you did not have a micro SD card reader handy. Menu 25 now, we have made it to Bluetooth. Here you have two options, but I'm gonna preface these options by reminding you that you need to have the Bluetooth adapter inserted into your DR10L recorder, or you're not gonna be able to select these options. If you have your Bluetooth adapter inserted, you'll have the choice of either having the Bluetooth turned off or setting it to remote or time code. The first thing you need to know is that when you enable remote or timecode, you can then go back to menu 23, which will then tell you the firmware version of your Bluetooth adapter that will now be working. So if you ever need to check your firmware version of your adapter, just make sure you go to menu 25 first and enable either remote or timecode. Back to these two menu options. The remote option will enable remote wireless control of your DR10L Pro using the phone app. As long as you have that app installed and Bluetooth set to remote, you can open the app, connect wirelessly up to five DR10L Pros, and then you can tell at a glance if your audio recorder is recording. You can start and stop the recording and you can view your waveforms. Unfortunately, you cannot monitor the audio wirelessly over Bluetooth, but at least you can tell if it's recording or not, which is a nice feature to have. Alternatively now, if you select time code instead of remote under the Bluetooth menu, that will enable time code syncing of your recorder over Bluetooth if you have an Atomos ultra compatible time code device. Unfortunately, this recorder only works with Atomos time code devices over Bluetooth, but hey, it's better than nothing. I am planning on making a dedicated video all about using time code with the DR10L Pro, so please subscribe if you want to see that video. Next, menu 26, we have TC Forget, which stands for Timecode Forget. If you're using this recorder and you want to pair it for timecode syncing, select this option in the menu. Menu 27 now is BTID, which stands for Bluetooth ID. This is useful if you're connecting to multiple DR10L Pro recorders using the app. You can access this menu to confirm the name of which recorder you're connecting to and controlling. Menu 28 is File Delete, and this is where you can delete individual audio files that you've recorded from your audio recorder. 
I never recommend doing this though. And I only ever recommend formatting the recorder to delete all the files. Call me paranoid, but I've read horror stories about filmmakers deleting files from their cameras and audio recorders in the past, and then the memory cards being corrupted. So I don't play around with memory cards and deleting files. I always recommend just deleting all of your files after you've copied them by formatting your memory card using the format option in menu 18 of the DR10L Pro. And that is how you set up your Tascam DR10L Pro. Remember that my cheat sheet for the DR10L Pro settings is linked down in the video description and you can download it completely for free and reference all of the settings that we've just talked about to help save you time. Please consider subscribing if you want to see that video all about time code with this recorder. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.